I wouldn't quite fit in the T1 though, not unless I was hacked into tiny pieces. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we are going to talk about the FL Sun S1 versus the FL Sun T1. Stay tuned. Big versus small. The S1 has a print speed of 1200 millimeters per second versus the T1 that has a maximum print speed of 1000 millimeters a second. There is very little between the two. 200 millimeters a second between friends, that's four Ender 3 V2s. Next up, acceleration. The S1 claims to have a maximum acceleration speed of 40,000 millimeters a second. Just to put that into context for you guys at home, this machine is capable of producing around four Gs of acceleration force. Lewis Hamilton would probably encounter between four to six Gs of force while he is hurtling around Silverstone. Very impressive. The T1 has an acceleration of 30,000 millimeters a second, so again, there is a difference in these figures, but needless to say, both of them are still ridiculously fast. <laughs> Nozzle temperatures. So the S1 will print up to 350 degrees C, which is quite hot in modern day standards for off the shelf type printers. Typically, most machines will only peak out around 300 degrees C which is more than ample for the most part of every material that the home user and small business user will be wanting to use. The T1 version has a maximum temperature of 300 degrees C, so pretty much on par with every current day standard. The build plate on this can heat to 120 degrees C, opposed to the T1, which is 110 degrees C. Not a huge difference, but it's a difference nonetheless. The plus side to the S1 is the actual inner 220 millimeters of the build plate can be heated independently. So if you wanted to, wanted to use the center of the build plate, it will only heat the center opposed to the whole build plate, saving you a little bit of electricity. Both are equipped with the, the CPAP cooling fan. Now, this is a very, very useful addition, albeit a very, very noisy addition. All I can describe this as is listening to Henry Hoover blasting away for the duration of your print. <laughs> Nozzles. The S1 comes fitted as standard with a hardened steel nozzle, opposed to the T1 model, which comes fitted with a standard brass nozzle. Both direct drive extruders are both machines. The extruders do look slightly different, but fundamentally they are exactly the same. They're both Delta printers. They feed and load exactly the same way in that respect. This one will not heat as hot as this one. Okay, so we'll just talk about the UIs and touchscreens. So as you can see, the, the T1 model has a basically face-mounted UI. The screen size for this is 4.3 inches. The S1 equivalent is quite a, a different design. I do like both screens, to be fair, on both machines. However, the S1 does take the edge very, very slightly. In my opinion, aesthetically, because it looks very well built in, molded as if it should be there. Next up, we have internal storage. The S1 machine has 16 gigabytes of internal storage. The T1 variant has eight gigabytes of internal storage. Today's standards, that's quite a lot of storage to be fair. Most printers don't have that volume of storage, but they are running Clipper. You do need to upload files to the machine via Wi-Fi through mainsail, through your slicing UI. You can do this without having a USB drive inserted into the machine. Internal storage of the machine will basically take that file, store it, and let you print it multiple times. They also come with a USB flash drive. The T1 comes with a 16 gigabyte. The S1 comes with a 32 gigabyte. So you've got plenty of storage between the two machines. The S1 comes in a huge box and took very, very minimal assembly. I think if you look at the, 
the video that I did on this, you will see the link in the description below. The only real assembly I had to do with this machine was attach the screen, which involved a couple of plugs, a couple of screws. I had to fit the door, which again was only a couple of screws, put the handle on, and that was pretty much this machine assembled, ready to go. The T1, on the other hand, was a totally different story. This came fully flat packed and probably took me estimated around about two hours to assemble the machine and I'm quite familiar with assembling 3D printers. For somebody experienced who knows what they're doing, I would say two hours to put this together. Anybody else who has never assembled a printer in their life before, relying on the instruction manual and whatever else, I would highly recommend four hours of your time. Don't rush. That's all I'm going to say. The S1 does feel a lot more premium than the T1. Albeit we have the pillars at the side that carry the mechanics, the linear rails and all the moving parts and whatever else. This is plastic. The top of the machine is plastic. The base of the machine is plastic. The S1, metal. It is all metal and it's a nice painted textured finish overall the external aesthetics for the machines i think you can tell the quality difference in the two the s1 in my opinion is a lot more focused at the high-end user with quality in mind the t1 is probably aimed more at the the hobbyist stroke home user due to the fact that it's probably you know it's affordability to make it affordable fl son have had to make compromises with the materials that they use. It's not, you know, poor quality or anything like that. All I'm trying to highlight here is that some components and some materials have been picked because they're more cost effective to produce. They're cheaper for the end user, ultimately. It doesn't affect the performance of the machine. It literally saves costs. We've done some test prints with this machine and we were impressed by the quality of the prints and the speed at which you perform these prints, to name but a few. The other things that I should mention, the S1 weighs an absolute ton. This machine takes two people to brutally manhandle it anywhere that you need it. You need to ensure that wherever you're storing this machine is exceptionally solid, i.e. not a desk, as you can see from the wobble. I'm not going to wobble too much in case the desk collapse, but it is a heavy piece of kit. The T1, on the other hand, is very, very, very different. It's not lightweight, but it's manageable. You could very easily have this on a solid cabinet or anything like that. Even if you wanted to, you could have it on the floor. But it's, it's a lot easier to move it around, more aimed at, you know, the home stroke hobby type user. If Delta printers are your thing. So to summarize my thoughts and what I would gauge the use cases for these machines, I would definitely say that the S1, with its premium price point, the price for this currently, £1,347. This can change. This is aimed very much at the professional stroke business user, in my opinion. You'd have to be really, really, really serious about the hobby to have this as a hobby grade printer, because it is a beast. In my mind, this is ideal for small batch production prototyping, parts that need to be printed, large volume, quickly. This machine is ideal for that purpose. The T1, on the other hand, has a smaller build volume. Equally, it still prints ridiculously quick, so it wouldn't make a small batch production out of the window. It would also be adequate for rapid prototyping in smaller parts, but it would also suit the home user because it's affordable the price for this is currently 555 pounds at this point in time again subject to change but it's an affordable machine anybody who's into their delta printers which i know there's quite a lot of people that are this would be a definite worthwhile consideration to have a have a look at this this over the, the like the v400 they've made some nice changes this is fully enclosed now you haven't got to worry about buying add-on kits for your printer or whatever to enclose it so you can print abs or asa or anything like that it's already done which i think a lot of manufacturers are doing now they're starting to realize that more and more people want an enclosed printer instead of an open frame printer what is the verdict my overall thoughts, both machines groundbreaking in terms of speed. I don't believe that there's currently anything else consumer grade on the market currently that will print at these speeds. 
I thought this would have quite negative effects on print quality. However, they both proved me wrong. Some of the prints that we printed on the T1, one of them, for instance, was a little stone bridge. The actual quality of that print was quite amazing, to be perfectly fair. Well on par with other leading brand manufacturers, but printed over twice as fast. That has to be a plus. The fact that they both run Clipper, they both currently use mainsail UI for remotely monitoring. The S1 has now got a profile for Orca Slicer, so that's basically showing that we are on the right path for tunability and everything else regarding FL Sun's new lineup of machines. So that has to be another plus. Both of them have webcams fitted. Both of them have internal lighting fitted. The two very, very, very capable machines, both for different use cases. Neither one of these machines are suitable for your bedroom. I will make that one perfectly clear. Home office, study, library, anywhere where you want peace and quiet, move away from these machines because they are very noisy. There are files available to print silences, but from the studies that we've read these really only decrease the decibels by about 10 which to me isn't a huge amount but it is noticeable apart from that like i say they're both very capable machines they're both worth a look depending on your individual use case if you need big industrial fast s1 if you want prototype cosplay flexes whatever else might tickle your fancy vases the t1 we have carried out very in-depth reviews on both of these machines, so you, if you would like the more in-depth review on the FL Sun S1, the link is in the description. And likewise, if you would also like to see the in-depth review for the T1 with the full assembly and all of the bells and whistles on that printer, again, the link is below in the description. Both of these machines are currently available for pre-order at 1233D. The links, again, will be in the description. So on that note, I hope you have enjoyed this video please do not forget to like subscribe and share and if you have any questions regarding either one of these machines please drop them into the comments box below and we will answer you as quickly as possible i hope you've enjoyed this video and goodbye for now as always we aim to have the most competitive 3d printer prices on the market if you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.